Hey everyone, this video is on the effect of initial velocity on projectile motion. By way of review, initial velocity can be analyzed in terms of its horizontal and vertical components. The horizontal and vertical components can be altered by changing the launch angle, that is the angle of the initial velocity vector above the horizontal axis. When we increase the launch angle, this will increase the initial vertical component of velocity and decrease the initial horizontal component of velocity if we keep the initial velocity itself constant. So if we keep the initial vertical velocity vector the same magnitude, but we increase the launch angle, this will result in a greater vertical component and a smaller horizontal component. Conversely, when we decrease the launch angle, this will decrease the vertical component and increase the horizontal component. And again, this is assuming that the initial velocity, which is the hypotenuse of this vector triangle, remains constant. So let's draw this again. We'll keep the initial vector, that is the hypotenuse, constant in length, but we decrease the launch angle. This will result in a smaller vertical component and a larger horizontal component, as you can see here. This is important to understand because when we are changing either the initial vertical component UY or the initial horizontal component UX of a object that is about to undergo projectile motion, it will have different effects on the object's range, which is a horizontal displacement, the time of flight, the time it spends in the motion, and also the maximum height or the vertical displacement it reaches before coming back down. The horizontal component of an object's initial velocity only affects the horizontal displacement, which is also known as the range of its projectile motion. This can be more easily understood by referring to the equation Sx, which is a range, is equal to the product of its initial horizontal component of velocity, ux, times the time of flight. In this equation, the range is directly proportional to its initial horizontal component of velocity. So if we double the ux, we'll expect the range to also double. If we halve the ux, we'll expect the range to also half. It's important to understand that when we are only changing the horizontal component of initial velocity, that is, if the vertical component remains constant, the maximum height of the object and the time it spends in the projectile motion will remain unchanged or constant. Only the range of the motion is affected. So let's say we have the parabolic motion of a projectile starting from the vertical displacement of zero, reaching the maximum height, coming back down to the same level as before. When we increase the horizontal component of its initial velocity, so greater ux, we will expect the range of the parabolic motion to be increased. When we decrease the ux value, we'll expect the range to also decrease. Now, notice how in both cases, whether the range has increased or decreased, the maximum height reached by the two motion remain the same as before, outlined by the black line. Not only do the maximum heights remain constant, the time for each of the motion in blue and red should be the same as the one as before in black. Only the range of the motion changes when the horizontal component of velocity is changing. And this is again assuming that the vertical component of velocity in the two cases are the same as before. We are only changing the horizontal component of velocity in this example. Now, what about when we change the vertical component of the initial velocity? First of all, when we are changing the vertical component of initial velocity, we will affect the time of flight of the motion. This can be understood by referring to this particular kinematic equation for projectile motion. SY is the final vertical displacement of the parabolic motion, UY is the initial vertical component of velocity, G is the acceleration due to gravity, and T is the time of flight. And we have T here and T squared here. If we have a full flight parabolic motion where the object returns to the same vertical displacement as where it started from, we can assume that SY here is zero. So our equation will simplify into zero is equal to UYT plus half GT squared. We can simplify the equation by dividing t on both sides. This will give us t equals to uy plus half gt. And as you can see here, t is equal to minus 2uy divided by g. So in this case, 
the time of flight is directly proportional to the vertical component of initial velocity. If we double ui, the time of flight will increase by two times. If we half ui, time will also be halved. Now, the range of motion not only depends on ux, it also depends on time. So if we're changing the vertical component of initial velocity, which changes time of flight, this will also have an effect on the range. So if the time of flight increases, the range will also increase. And conversely, if the time of flight decreases, the range will also decrease. Lastly, the vertical component of initial velocity also affects the maximum height of the parabolic motion. This can be understood by referring to this particular kinematic equation. By way of review, at the maximum height of projectile motion, the value of the vertical component velocity, which is vy, is zero. So we can say zero squared is equal to uy squared plus 2gsy. In this instance, sy will be the maximum height. So by rearranging, sy is equal to minus uy squared divided by 2g. In this equation, the value of the maximum height is directly proportional to the square of the vertical component of initial velocity. If we double the value of ui, we will expect the maximum height to increase by a factor of 4. If we halve the value of ui, we will expect the maximum height to decrease by a factor of 4. Let's go through the effects of vertical component of initial velocity more visually. When we increase the value of ui, this increases the time the object spends in the air, so the time of flight which also in turn increases the range or the horizontal displacement of the parabolic motion. And unlike the effect of changing the horizontal component, when we are increasing the vertical component of initial velocity, this also increases the maximum height of the parabolic motion, as you can see here. Conversely, when we decrease the initial vertical component of velocity, we will decrease the time of flight, decrease the range of the motion, and also decrease the maximum height that the object reaches before coming back down. And again, I want to emphasize these effects are assuming we are only changing the vertical component of velocity while keeping the horizontal component the same. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.